I do want to just briefly ask you about your piece. Yeah. Which looks well, at Immelt's tenure through the prism of really Welch's eyes. Really Jack Welch. I mean, I, I think, you know, Jack Welch was hailed as the CEO of the century, not just the decade or the year. So the day they start calling Bezos the manager of the century, it's time to start worrying. But that's a huge reputation. Um, not to defend ML because the, the stock price over the last 10 years has been horrible, as everybody knows, but he inherited a lot of problems that were created in the Welch era. Over-reliance on GE Capital. You know, GE, GE got into some counting problems. You know, they were always massaging the numbers. Jack Welch could just dip into GE's little honeypot there and make it look good for investors. Um, the, the strategy, and that papered over this, like, supposedly brilliant strategy that you could be a conglomerate as long as you were number one or two in every market. And now, let's just step back for a second. Does that really make any sense, size? You know, I think it's more how profitable are you in every market and how big are the moats? What competitive advantage do you have in these markets? And as we saw in 2008, GE not only had no competitive advantage in financial services, it probably had a competitive disadvantage because it had no reliable source of deposits. And basically, ML spent the, his entire tenure trying to dig out from under that. I would argue that the only competitive advantage GE had in financial services was it had a AAA rating, and then that went away. That's true. And they so lost after that. you had, don't have the AAA rating, then you're kind of just another player. Yeah. So I think people would love to see it slim down. Ironically, it may end up being pretty much the GE that Jack Welch in, inherited. You know, a, kind of boring, but very reliable, growing at the rate of the economy, executing well, well run. There are worse things. Uh, you, you quoted an analyst who was on our air from Barclays, yes. characterized Immelt's tenure as nothing but bad luck, although he was, they were clearly pushing for Immelt to leave. You think that sums yeah. it up, or is it more nuanced than that? Well, I, th I think it is more nuanced. I mean, I think there are things that Immelt could have done. I mean, first of all, in fairness to Jack Welch, we don't know what he would have done if he'd stayed on through all of this. So maybe he would have pulled the rabbit out of the hat. Immelt had a lot of problems, but I think he was too much a part of the GE culture. He was too steeped in the Welch era, and they were too slow to begin to repudiate that model and back, back away with it. Now, they, they have started doing a fair amount. They're streamlining the, the company. They pretty much did reject the Welch thing. But everybody I talked to said they should have done it years sooner. What do you know about Flannery, who ran the healthcare business, and his leadership style well, and, and track record? Maybe this is my bias. I'm a journalist. But I, one thing that caught my eyes, he's an avid reader. And I said, good, <laughs> because uh, I think avid reader is they tend to be smart, and they then they uh, they they can they learn things quickly. And I I think he sounds good. You know, his promise of a review of all the businesses has people very excited. That you know he is going to accelerate this rethinking and reshaping of the corporation, and it's going to you know separate the things that really don't belong together. Yeah.